This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's repair, we are going to work on this Troy built Bronco. It is a 2010 model year. It's got the Kohler Courage engine in it. I got this machine as part of a lot that I bought for $100. I did a video actually on it where I got this. I got a Bowlands push mower, a bagger, a brand new bagger that fit this that the guy never used or only used a couple of times and then a 1500 pound yard trailer and i did all the breakdown of everything that i sold it for i think i sold the mower for 100 bucks the yard trailer for 150 and then the uh bagger for 120 so i did pretty well on that already which means that i don't really have any money in this machine now which is really good Obviously, it is rough. It has sat outside or under a deck that was outside. It was not a covered deck for many, many years. The guy bought a zero turn and did not use this machine after that. As far as I know, it was in good running condition until the blade cable broke on it. So hopefully all it is is just getting it back up to speed nothing like big broke on it we just gotta throw a lot of wd-40 or these guys at strike hold i have some stuff down in the description below cleaner lubricant man you can use some of this on that they're you united states company uh feel free to purchase from them. their stuff works really well um and i use it for a lot of applications around here especially like if WD-40 does not cut it. Uh, kind of adds a little bit of extra layer to that. But enough of that. I'm going to give you all a walk around. Before I wash this machine, I'm going to take the deck off as well. And then we're going to go through the pro whole process of just getting this thing running and driving. And then we'll work on getting it mowing as well. Let me give you a quick walk around before we clean it up and get to work. And if this gives you all any idea of the work that I have cut out for me this year, this uh, winter, then we got a lot of machines to work on. And this Troy build is the lucky next one to do it. Let's give a walk around. All four tires are off of the rims, so I got to get all the tires back on the rims uh, because from pushing it and whatnot, the transmission's engaging and disengaging like it's supposed to. This is the broken blade engage cable uh again really really crusty machine i think we can bring it back to life though i'll give you all the model number here in just a second we'll look under the hood and this is a kohler courage i think this is, this is a 17 or a 19 oh this is a 20 because it's an early kohler courage before they started dialing back the horsepowers on these good news is it doesn't seem like it's got a ton of leaks in it you know these leak like crazy i just finished a cub cadet up and i think we've got actually this oil is very clean it looks like it may have a little bit of fuel in it though i'm pretty sure i'll have to put a hypo carb kit on this it's uh i got those up for steel a while back just for a purpose like this just knowing that i'll have plenty of opportunities to work on Kohler Courages. Luckily this one does not have a cracked block, but this is the model number 13WX78KS066. Uh, if you look at the fifth mo fifth number of the serial number, 1190 will give you the last digit of the year that this was made. Based on the body style of what this looks like, this is a 2010 model year, so that's kind of cool because uh, that fifth number is zero. Took me a while to learn that. But just looking around, you can see it's just been sitting up for a really, really long time. So probably going to have to put things like starter solenoids and stuff like that on it. These pulleys are... <coughs> Spindles are relatively frozen on it. The good news is, I, with 
another lot i actually just picked up a deck out there that has the exact same 42 inch deck it's just rusted out so worst case i just have to swap pulleys and spindles over to this deck because i assume that this deck's in good shape otherwise we'll pull it here in just a second to see again the 20 horsepower cola courage absolutely nasty just sitting we're gonna wash this sometimes i don't wash things before i uh fix them but i am on this one we look underneath first thing i checked when i came up over there and got this machine does it have a cracked block and the answer is no so that's good which means that i think uh, this machine probably has relatively not a ton of hours on it obviously it's been used a decent bit and again just been sitting up for a really really long time the throttle cable and the choke are working and i want while we're here, let's check the air filter because I'm sure this air filter looks nasty. And then what we'll do is I'll go ahead and get all the tires inflated and stuff. And so I can roll it around a little bit easier. We'll clean it in the morning because days are getting shorter. Getting dark early out here now. These have the Vera Drive pedal drive transmission on them. Not a bad transmission. I just finished up an LTX 1040. It's got over 300 hours on it. Transmission's a little sluggish, but still working pretty good. So if we look inside here, the air filter actually could be a lot worse. Just a little caked up with dirt and stuff but nothing ridiculous by any means. A lot of times I can just beat them out and keep cruising on with them and they work out pretty good. So I'm gonna get all the tires filled. I'll go ahead and take the deck off before I wash it. I'll show you kind of the condition of everything underneath. I do know it'll need drive belts as well. But man, this is one of the dirtiest ones I've had in a while, guys. So we'll, uh, we'll see how well she shines out. So now that we've got the tires pumped up, it's nice to see uh, a little bit more of the machine, I suppose, uh, without, you know, tires off the rims. It took me about uh, just under a half hour to seat all of them. The, one of them was, I think this left rear in particular was bad because it had a flat spot that I couldn't get out. So it became a little tricky. The rest of them were pretty quick. A little bit of damage here on the nose cone. Nothing crazy, thankfully. Uh, just a little rust here. And there just from sitting this thing just needs a good pressure washing but it does roll nice and free and the brakes work and all that stuff underneath the machine I wanted to show y'all we'll look inside underneath here first and I don't know if you can see the condition of the belts but they'll definitely need replacing uh, just from cracking and age and then underneath here well, let's look together because I haven't been underneath here yet Looks like all the stuff looks good. Springs, pulleys, things along those lines. And we'll just need drive belts here as well. Pretty sure I've got both drive belts that this machine needs. We're gonna test it out with the deck off and all that good stuff first. And just to make sure that everything runs and drives like it's supposed to. And then we'll move on from there. We've got a lot of rust clean out to do on this pulley here, the double stack pulley. And hopefully it, this pulley right here will lower enough so that we can get that belt off. Because if we don't, I'll probably go ahead and spray some strike hold or some WD-40 down the, down the shaft there. That way it'll hopefully come out. Um, long story short, everything's pretty much frozen on this. <laughs> Nothing... Uh, just swept the garage but the blades are bent underneath otherwise i'd pull it up and show you so we'll, new set of blades obviously gotta fix this uh flap here as well and uh i mean it looks it looks bad but i feel like with a, maybe probably a new carb or a carb clean it's probably gonna run and drive so uh it's dark now. Let me hit it in the morning, see what we can do. Got the deck off, 
and looks a lot better we are we are going to do probably a final cleaning on this a little bit later on i just want to get it clean so that i could work on it without getting massively dirty uh atf in the rear tires i made a little bit of a mess on the floor there but they seem to be holding okay so we'll see these went down overnight so uh i've rolled it a little bit and uh, actually tilted the mower a little bit to get some of the drywall cracks hopefully sealed up on the sides of the tires. That will fix itself once we get this thing running and driving, get that transmission fluid coated all around the tires, and it will uh, end up working well for us, I think. Now, if I can get this hood off with one hand, we'll look underneath the machine again. There we go. And again, the engine's looking a lot cleaner. I didn't really see where there were any oil leaks. I can't remember. We had plenty of oil in this thing, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's really clean, actually. And does it smell of fuel? Not really. I'll double check it, but it's like it's. like it looks like it just got changed before the machine got parked. So that's a positive. And what we'll do is... Pull the carb off, and I'll get y'all set up so that you can see how to take one of these off. It's really not that hard, uh, and we're going to look inside it to see if it needs replacing that oil, or that gas, actually, or that tank smells fairly dry, though, So, and it doesn't look... I wonder if he stored it dry. I'm tempted to put gas in it just to see if it runs first. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Maybe for viewing purposes and entertainment purposes, we might try that out. Let me throw some gas in it. I've put a battery in it. The battery cables seem a little flimsy like they all do on these. Uh, lubed up some of the throttle linkages and stuff. It's not leaking gas, so I don't know if the uh, anti-backfire solenoid is going to work. But it sounded like it did.
aren't in, in the way there. You see it's running good, I forgot, but I probably had water in the spark plug boot and things along those lines since I just washed it. How about this? Let's see if it'll drive. fix something. I am going to have to put drive belts on it. These drive belts are pretty rough. I think I've got them here. Let's see. We can probably speed her up a little bit now. Steering's good and tight. Engine doesn't smoke or knock. better backfire no wonder if it'll start back up for us yep that starter ain't been turned in a while Couldn't ask for better. That's excellent, actually. We're gonna let it sit. This is everything I needed to do running-wise, hopefully. Uh, next order of business, we're gonna be changing some drive belts, I think. Uh, might even pull the deck out and see what we can do with that deck uh, and just get the, an overall condition of that. We gotta clean up some pulleys and who knows, this thing might be cutting here before long. So we've got the deck here. We're going to be working on that next. A few minor things to do. I don't know if we're going to have to do a ton to this to get it back going. Uh, just from where it's sat, there is a couple of soft spots right there. But it should be all right. The deck chute needs, the spring needs to be reattached. And all you got to do there is I loosen up one of these bolts and pull it up. Uh, also, we'll also have to slide this bracket back a little bit, or this little rod back a little bit, so that I can get enough leverage. Have to lift this, shoot up, put this spring facing that way, and then push down on the chute, and then push this rod back. Uh, it will be that way. So little bit of work there i'll show you what it's supposed to look like because it's a little bit tricky getting it on i uh, have both of these deck guards which is a plus uh the this is frozen up so we got to get that freed back up that's the principal issue here uh and that's probably why the deck cable broke on it i have a deck cable here so that's no biggie and we tilt this up 
and you can see the blades are eh they're okay I think this one's bent though I'm gonna see if I can get it uh, let's see I got the, the brake on so can't really get it out very much I'm gonna check the blades but I'm pretty sure this one is bent and so new blades on order ain't that big of a deal might might see if I can just go ahead and rip them off of here just to get them out of the way while we're working on stuff spindles look to be intact and in order to get off the tensioner pivot point right here it's a 9 16th I think it's a 9 16th on the top and it looks like we've got one on the bottom as well that we have to get off. I'm gonna pull that off here next. I'm gonna see if I can get the blades off as well. I might as well go, I might go ahead and take off these covers on the side. The deck belt honestly looks to be in fairly good shape. So we may not even have to replace the deck belt. We do have to replace the drive belts though. Those are really, really cracked and they're probably the original ones that are 13 plus years old. So, let me get to it. I'll show you progress when I get to this point of taking the tensioner off. So I'm about to take all this off. I showed you all that bolt earlier for the tensioner. First thing I'm going to do though is take the spring off. Now, different models of these decks have different spring, like return spring setups. This one hooks in right here where uh, the cable hooks in. We should just be able to pull it off. So that's good. Put that for safekeeping. We're going to go ahead and put take the rest of this off here. I already had it most of the way. And let's see if I can pop this belt off without having to take the pulley out. Maybe. But either way, what we're trying to accomplish here is accessing everything right here. So what really needs to happen, I don't know if I have to necessarily pull it all off to do this, but we're going to wire brush a bunch of this stuff. So I'm just going to get this out of the way. And what I'm going to do, and you can kind of see, I'll get y'all down here so that you can see what everything looks like. Now this... This is where our hang up is, this rust right here. So I'm gonna take a wire brush or maybe even like a little grinding wheel. Don't forget this little washer here on the inside of this. And then we'll take and pull this. And then we've also got that as well. So essentially what I'm gonna do is wire wheel all of this, the mating surface where it comes on to the deck, the bottom of this, the top side of this as well, and that should take care of the issue with everything frozen up. Now we do need to take care of some of these, some of this belt, uh, some of these pulleys as well, because they are a little rusted also. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, get everything out, take care of all that and uh, we will see what we end up, uh, end up with here in a few minutes. So I'm about to put it all back together now. I used a wire brush and grind off as much as I could. And you can see we're a lot cleaner right here as well as underneath. Which way do I need to go to show you all that? As well as underneath there. Did my best on top. This is turning more freely. So that's good. Just need to move it back and forth some. I think we'll be okay. A little bit of junk here in the crevice, but. I think we're gonna be okay. So let me put all of this back on. Oh, like it's supposed to be. So this little washer, don't forget, goes underneath all of this. 
right there to kind of help it pivot and then let's see washer ah brakes are trying to give me a hard time here putting it in this way oh we had it in though of course all right so we are in now on this side i'm going to lift up the mower deck find the find the nut there it is okay put the nut in get everything nice and secure we'll tighten it down here and hopefully everything will pivot like it's supposed to now all right let's see how we doing oh yeah much better we're just going to do this i'm going to do this probably a good 50 times or so just to make sure everything's going to flow nice and smoothly because we don't want another deck bracket to break on us and since i've got this pulled out oops, just pulled out the pulled out the bell on that side too how are we doing on the So we're doing okay with that as well. And then on this side over here, there's a weird angle right now, guys, I'm sorry. Still a little hesitant to move here so I'm gonna work on that I have some blades that I'm gonna put on it and I'll put the spring back on as well make sure everything's gonna work like it's supposed to when it comes to that also so oops, it goes right there and then goes back here on the back come on there we go all right so, let's see. As you can see, we've got nice range of motion now. And we just need to make sure that all of our pulleys and everything are free. Oh, that one's not. And ready, to, uh, ready for action again. I've gotten to where every pulley is spinning freely now, thankfully. Um, there are just a little... Growling just a little bit. This one, I've already kind of put a little grease in. These don't have any grease fittings on them. Pretty customary with lower level riding mowers. Uh, what I'm going to do is take this top pulley off. There we go. And So I've got the tension spring back off of it. I'm going to take this top pulley off. There's a washer that goes underneath. If that falls off, then just remember that. And then what I'm going to do, this should fall down under, on the bottom, or fall through the spindle, just like so. Now, what I do a lot of times here is you can beat out these uh, spindle bearings but just to extend the life a little bit what I'm going to do is literally I'm just going to shoot some grease down up in or down in here nothing fancy nothing ridiculous give it a few pushes or a few pumps and what that's going to allow me to do is just slide I know I've seen freedom mowers take these dust covers off and actually put grease down in there Clever, really another great idea 
I'm just doing more of a quick and dirty here. So I'm gonna pull, push this, uh, push this up through here. See a lot of grease comes through like that. Well, I'm gonna take that grease and put it on the bottom down here of the shaft. And then I'm gonna push it up into the push it up into the top of the shaft here. So a lot of grease obviously. I'm just gonna kinda do that right there. So what I'll do, I'll just leave it like this because it's a little bit easier, I think. Put this back on. Again, if that little washer came off, you're gonna take that washer off. Or put that washer back on. And then put this back on. It's gonna fall into some slots here on the spindle. Or it should at least. And then it's a messy job, so be ready for that. And we'll put this on. Just like so. So this was just roaring just a second ago. And once we get these things turning, they'll get a little quieter, which is good. So that's a good thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see, so the belt's still on it. We got the tension arm back right. I'll put the spring back on it. And next order of business, I guess, is we're gonna go ahead and uh, change out that deck spring. Uh, the blade engagement cable, that's the proper term for it. A Little bit tricky. I'm going to do my best to see if I can show you how you have to do it. Let me show this to y'all. Hopefully there's enough light for me to show this to y'all. So the cable comes from the front of the machine. It's actually zip tied near where that shifter is. It comes around the back of the machine up to a clip that is right under here. What I did is I took a angle needle nose pliers and was able to get the clip undone right there and this cable is actually broken i hope there's enough light for y'all to see but if you look down here you'll be able to see and i can't show it on camera very well that this comes up that the rest of the cable comes up and just attaches right there on the side uh it's pretty obvious. I know it can't show it very well on camera, but that's what it is. Um, I took the battery and the battery holder brackets out in order to get to it. And then I'm going to put the new one back in and uh, or a new one on. And I think we're getting close to attaching the deck. I'll show you the way that it's routed and everything as well. So we've got a little light in here now. Right there in the middle of your screen, right there is where that cable clips in to. Now just make sure that it clips properly so that you don't have any issues later down the line. This one wants to be a little bit of a pain, but we're, we'll get it. There we go. It's already trying to peel peel back a little bit but that's okay and then right I don't know if y'all can get it right there is where it clip where it hooks in so that's good now what it does let's see if I can show it to y'all so it goes around the back of the transmission goes over this whoops goes over this You'll see a zip tie where it's hooked on underneath down here. And so just replace that zip tie 
pull that old cable out, which I may be able to pull it out like it is, and replace that zip tie where it is underneath the machine here. And you've got the new cable installed, so congratulations. <laughs> got dark outside, but I wanted to show you all, I got everything back together. I think I showed you all the cable, the way that it lines up, and then it just clips in here to the uh, deck right at that clip. And then it goes to that tension arm. And I've tested it out. The, the new cable seemed like it was a tad tight, but it's actually working like it's supposed to. So that's good. And then the belt's got the correct tension whenever it's not on. So I'm hoping that that's all right. I don't have the little guards back on yet, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, or actually, we'll get to it tomorrow. What I want to do is I just want to pull this thing out to see if it'll run and if the you know the deck spindles and everything work on it so i'm gonna get y'all right here i'm gonna pull it out aim it out that way a little bit so that i hopefully don't throw anything in anything that i don't want to have anything thrown into if that makes any sense so let's see So that's a good way to end the day. Deck is a little loud, so I may have to pull them bearings back off. Either way, the deck has got to come back off because I am going to change the drive belts and stuff out. That's good enough for me today, guys. Let me check the gas, make sure it didn't. Ooh. Hopefully it just ran out of gas and didn't give me carb issues now. Yeah, it's just out of gas, so that's good. So what a successful day. We got this thing from dirty and clapped out to running and driving. We had to, all we had to do was put gas in it, battery, free up everything on the deck, and man, this thing's cruising along, as well as the deck cable. Don't forget about the deck cable. So that's really good. The only thing we may have to worry about, I may have to dump a little more ATF into the left rear because of the way it sat for a while. I think the right rear is good. Front tires are holding there. We'll probably put a little bit of ATF in that. But it's dark. It's dinner time. And we're going to continue this tomorrow. For all I know, I might... I think I've got the deck belts that I need here. Or the drive belts that I need here to swap them out. That I may have gotten for a really, really good deal at Tractor Supply. We'll uh, uncover all that tomorrow. But for now, it's time to go inside. So in editing this video, I found out that we need to make it into two parts. This is a great place to end part one. We took something that was 
sitting for years and years and years and we're able to get it back running driving and cutting with actually somewhat minimal effort i was very surprised that by simply putting gas in the mower and putting a battery in it that it started up and ran especially as good as it did i don't have to do any fuel related carb work or anything along those lines to this machine which is fantastic and then uh, the belts are still good enough for them to drive. In part two, we will change out the drive belts for some new belts because I'm not leaving those cracked drive belts on there and sending it out like that. As easy as drive belts are to change, although they are a little bit more complicated than, say, a Craftsman, they are pretty uh, straightforward when it comes to changing them uh, on MTDs after you've done a few of them like I have. Another thing we're also going to do in part two is we are going to, even though we got the deck to turn and um, work and for the blades to engage, we had to, or I have to do a little bit of work on the deck as well. The spindles are a little loud. I find out that the blades are not lined up correctly, and so I have to do a little bit of doctoring in order to get all that. That'll all come in part two, but I hope you enjoyed part one where we did revive this Troy Belt Bronco uh, riding mower lawn tractor. And it's just always good, always fun to take something that's been sitting for a really long time and bring it back to life. And so I hope you all enjoyed that part of it. And in part two, we're going to be making it so that it's uh, ready for sale and ready to go out for... Uh, hopefully years of service again. Thanks again for tagging along on this video as always and I always appreciate all the support from y'all as well. And I'll catch y'all on part two hopefully of this Troy Built Bronco machine coming up in a few days.